No coffee for my breakfast No butter on my roll I ain't got a drop of milk For the cornflakes in my bone While I'm all fresh out Got Kingfish here What's going on, man? Kingfish, uh, Christone Ingram Yes, sir But what do you want me to call you? I mean, it doesn't matter uh, King, Chris, Kingfish, Chris It doesn't matter, man, not at all all right. Well, I'll call you. I'll call you King then. Cool. That's cool. It doesn't feel weird. I'm not referring. to... He's not royalty. Like, <laughs> like I'm not saying your highness, your grace. It doesn't feel. Because you know what? You're a modest guy. Oh, you're very you, modest. Uh, we're, we're we're recording right now at Fender headquarters. Yep. And I want to say, walking just from one building to the other, you've been complimented endlessly from everybody who saw you play the other day. And uh, you're yeah you're kind of shy taking compliments about yeah, uh, about yeah, your playing yeah man I just uh, yeah man, I just I just ride the wave man that's all and just uh, try to not let it go to my head and anything like that like oh, I try you, not to think none of it you know oh so you're, it's an effort for you to to kind of relax and you get the comps you don't want it to get to your head you don't yeah wanna, yeah you don't I, yeah I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to I don't wanna think about it too much you know okay yeah yeah, yeah so you're just you you appreciate it? Oh yeah, most definitely. But, most definitely. Because that's that's one of the hardest things I find is is taking a compliment, mm-hmm. especially going from one room to the other. You're right. You're, just, you're getting you're getting bombarded. And well, Kingfish, King. Yes, sir. You have an album called Kingfish. Yes, sir. Yes, it's fantastic. It is out now. Thank you, man. Yeah, um, we we had a we had a fun time recording it uh, back in November 2017. Took oh. us took us like four days to do it. Three uh three days on the music one on the vocals and it was a lot of fun man a lot of fun it was my debut record so i really had a lot of fun doing it uh it's killer i want to and i'm gonna dissect some of the tracks with thank you, you thank that's you. all right no problem at all. yeah because uh you there, there's some good tracks now before we do that let's let's get in your story a little bit because um first off i found you i i found you on instagram <laughs> which is which is weird I, it's it's weird to say that's how i'm finding all my my favorite musicians these days. Right, but, right, right, right. But somebody posted something of you just shredding. And I'm like, who is this guy? And how is he playing the blues? And I and I thought you were like 40 years old <laughs> when you played. I've been told. <laughs> oh, I know. Because uh, you it, one of your songs, uh, bef- uh, no, it's, is it Before I'm Old? That's it. No, Been Here Before. Oh, been Here yeah, Before. Because yeah. your grandparents. Yeah, yeah, my, um, yeah, my grandma. Um, my uh, my grandma when I was younger, I used to like sing for the family and everything like that. And they used to say things like, "Oh, you know, he's been here before." This, that, and the third. Yeah. So, do you believe that? Uh, I mean, to a certain degree. Yeah, I you guess. Do. Yeah, a little bit. You know. L- look, I mean, your your lyrics are very mature. Your playing is very mature for your age. I think. I think. Okay. You, man, like, definitely. and and I'm excited to see what happens. So, let's go back to your story You're from uh, Clarksdale. Yep, Clarksdale, Mississippi is like the mecca of the blues. It's, yeah, uh, it is. Uh, it's like um, the largest city in Cahoma County, Mississippi. So it's a it's a very it's a very significant place. So I grew up there. Yeah. So my favorite musicians are from there. Cool, cool. Sam Cooke is is yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Sam Cooke, Ike Turner, um, Muddy wasn't really from there. He just made his way through there. Um, yeah, uh, it's a lot of musicians who are. Who are not in the blues that are from there? Uh, Rick Ross, the rapper, he's originally from there. Oh, yeah, and uh, and my personal favorite, Nate Dogg, he's from there as well. So it's it's a very significant town. Your personal favorite's Nate Dogg. Oh yeah, I love <laughs> Nate Dogg, man. Yeah, because yeah. because you're let's see, you got into the blues around age eight, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. So growing up, all your friends they're not listening to the blues. Oh yeah, man. No, yeah. what are, what are they listening to? They're, well, around that time when I was in school, Migos just came out. Migos. <laughs> They were yeah, people were listening to Drake and Boosie, which I lo- I love like like I love rap too, but yeah. not as much as I love you know the you know the old stuff you know like soul R and B and blues and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. So man. so that stuff really resonated with you more than oh yeah, most definitely because I was always around that a little bit more. Like the only two people in my household who listened to rap was my dad and my brother. My dad didn't listen to it as frequently as my brother did. But other than that, I was listening to man, Muddy Waters, and <laughs> BB King, the yeah. Spinners, Charlie Wilson, Gap Band, stuff like yeah. that. Earth, I've, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Oh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh. I've heard you play BB King covers too. So I mean, yeah. look, I, I like that. 
you're listening to all the classic old guys, and I'm hearing it through your playing. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Nothing like the old stuff, man. Most definitely. Yeah. So, is it your older brother that listening to rap or your? Oh brother? yeah, um, yeah, my older brother. Yeah, my uh, my older brother. He's like he's like different. He's like DJ Screw, chopping screw stuff. So I was listening to that at an early age. So he he got me into all of that as well. So. I've never felt more old. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> now see, but look, that you're you're the bridge. You're bridging, like you, you're you're absorbing the the music that's coming out now. What everyone's into, but then you you're like the only guy your age that I know that's that really that really admires and just resonates with all the older blues music. Especially, I mean, you're you're from Blue Central. The oh yeah, most definitely. Delta. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the that's the place right there. Do you have to be born there? Do you think to, to get that? Like, should I go there and have a kid <laughs> if I want my kid to play the blues? Oh, hey man, hey man. It doesn't yeah. hurt. Right? Uh, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, no. you're right. It doesn't hurt, man. You know what? No, I man tried, man. You you never know what might happen. So most definitely, okay, yeah. I should try. <laughs> yeah, try. It. If it doesn't happen, if my Filipino boy doesn't play the blues, <laughs> I'm gonna be so mad. Hey man, but don't blame me, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna blame you. His name? I'm gonna name him Kingfish. Okay, so. cool. cool. <laughs> Uh, no, look, your uh, your 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 parents, uh, soul musicians, right? Church musicians. Yeah, uh, my mom actually, my dad, my dad really don't do anything as he tried to sing, but not. Oh, really. yeah. But uh, just listens to rap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my uh, my mom was a singer, and all of my uncles on her side of the family sing, preach, and all my aunts they sing. Um, on her dad's side, uh, Charlie Pride is actually a relative. Um, like, like the he was like the at a, at a time he was like the the only black famous country singer that that you know you know uh, that they ever was. So we got him, and my dad was pretty much he was like instrumental in like getting me all the gear, and everything. <laughs> he was the one that gave me my first guitar. He was your hustler, yeah, <laughs> something like that, yeah. Oh, I love that. And okay, so your your parents are, or your mom sings though, mm -hmm. right? And you grow up, you're eight years old, you're starting to get in the blues. You're thinking, okay, I get this, I like it, and now I'm gonna play the drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, drums was like a uh, was uh, uh, was like a church thing too. Um, yeah, pretty much growing up in church and and everything. I used to go beat on the drums and everything. And uh, blues, um, the blues, the blues pretty much came after that. I believe. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was church music first. Yeah. When when do you think? Uh, or where in your life were you when you heard the blues and you thought, I get it. I get this. Man, uh, not only the time when my dad showed me a PBS documentary on uh, a Muddy Waters, which was cool, man. And uh, not only that, we had to watch that uh, Severin and Son uh, episode <laughs> that had B.B. Uh, King on there. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first introduction to B.B. Uh, and then he went and um, he went and. He went to to the blues museum and showed me all this stuff like right before he um right before he enrolled me in the program. The Delta Blues Museum. Yeah, is Delta, right, yeah, that's right it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And learning about all that history, man, I was like, Yeah, I like this. This is dope. And just to just to see where all the other genres came from. You know, everybody know the blues is the mm -hmm. root. So just to see all that was really good, cool, man. I was like, I was drawn to that sound, you know. And plus like plus like being coming from gospel music and watching those guitar players, like that pretty much got me in guitar. So not only that, when I see this music with the blues and this and this guitar driven a little bit, yeah, that really got me more interested in it as well. And what was it? Was it was it the the music, like the instrumentation, or was it the lyrics that really pulled you in? Because the lyrics are interesting in blues. Pretty much just the They're just sad. the whole thing, the whole yeah. thing, man. Just the just the moodiness, you know. The you know uh, BB's electrifying guitar playing, and I loved his voice as well, man. So I could so tell, I, yeah. So man, yeah. I, I, I guess it, I guess it all played a factor in it. And okay, so now did you get into jazz at all? Would you get into any of that? Like oh, jazz, I that was like when I started to play, when I started to get more familiar with everything. Uh, I don't I don't play any, uh, but I do want to get into it now mm -hmm. that I'm now that I'm learning more musically and everything. Yeah. But I wasn't into jazz earlier around that time. Right. Yeah. The only thing the only thing uh I thought was jazz, well maybe it is um 
like smooth jazz, like Kenny G stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Because uh, cause my field grade teacher used to play, like, Kenny G all day, every day. So, you know, that was, like, the only thing I knew it, I knew about it at the moment. Well, gr- but, growing up, yeah. that's that's an easier pill to swallow is the smooth jazz. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I actually, I actually, when I got more deep into the blues, I started I start learning my history more about jazz, too. Like, Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington. Yeah. And uh, and, uh, and uh, Theo Lonis Monk and George Benson. And the, and the list goes on and on. Yeah, of course. George Benson. Yeah. Incredible, James. yeah, yeah, man. Charlie Christian, all those guys. Oh, man. yeah, yeah, I love all that. Wes man. Montgomery, yo, dude, most yeah. definitely, most definitely. You know, I heard Wes Montgomery, you know, how he plays with his thumb, right? Just right, like right. The, the flat part of his, right. of his thumb with his right on his right hand. I heard he did that because the neighbor, I, I thought it was his family, like his, his kids were sleeping upstairs, or was it the neighbor? Well, like, well, he's trying to keep it the, down. The, the story that I heard, well, the story I read on it was from a YouTube comment, so it probably isn't. True. <laughs> but uh, but it was like he he said uh, the the guy was like when he was practicing guitar when he was a kid, um, the neighbor complained because he was using the pick, so he put the pick down, and that's why he softer sound. Yeah, softer yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's true. that might be true. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. But. It it is sad how much information I get from YouTube comments. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. right. You be like, oh, okay, man. But yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, Kind of like Wikipedia in a way, but... Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. See, I, we shouldn't be trusting any of it, but I, I, that and Yelp reviews, I won't go to a restaurant that doesn't have four stars or more, oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, whatever. Like, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm too reliant on the internet, but because mm-hmm. I am, that's how I found you. Okay, that's dope. Yeah. Dude. You're, are you classically trained, or how did you... When you picked up the guitar, did you just, you just adhere to it and you just figured it well, out on your uh, own? Well, um, that was... Uh, the lessons at the Delta Blues Museum. They pretty much taught me everything. For, uh, pretty much like right before I went to guitar, I was playing bass uh, in the blues. And um, they they showed me everything with that. They showed me all my notes and everything. And then when I picked up guitar, they showed me some stuff with that. And It's like a bass, but smaller. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, you know. And um, I just started learning on my own after that, you know. And I'm still learning now, you know. So I've, I've grown a lot musically since that time, you know. Yeah. So, so what were growing up? What was how was your how would you practice? Would you just lock yourself in your bedroom and just yeah, play man, yeah, twenty four seven. Yeah, man. Nobody saw you. YouTube. And YouTube. Everything here, just 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 looking at different players, man. Because me and my other friends who was musicians and in, in town, that's all we did, man. Especially when I was playing bass, we was looking at stuff for Stanley Clark and Victor Wood. And, <laughs> wow. And and Marcus Miller, all of that, man. Jocko. So so all these musicians coming up now because. Uh, I'm a lot older than you. I'm oh. not. Uh, you're 20, right? Yeah, 20. Yeah, I'm 33. I thought you was like younger. I oh, dude, I look like I'm in high school. <laughs> I, I, that's why I'm trying to grow this beard out right now. Uh, yeah, well, I can understand the struggle with that one because I'm, I'm trying to grow mine as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, ain't, yeah. it ain't working. Let's go. Yeah. To, we'll we'll grow it together. Okay, I'll I'll send you updates. Dope, we'll dope, up. dope, right. dope. Cool. Um, so so growing up, I didn't get, I didn't have a lot of YouTube. I mean, I would I would maybe rip some videos off of Kazaa or something. <laughs> I, I don't know, but. Uh, so I think like now kids, they get to see all, what they just get to visualize everything now. Oh, yeah. and they, oh, they're yeah. not just listening for the notes. They get to see what the guitarist is doing, what that skateboarder is doing and they yeah. can, and then they grow. So they're, they're growing exponentially with, with their skills and you're, you're leading the forefront weirdly with blues music though. I, I, I'm still just blown away by that. You don't see a lot of young blues musicians who really just captured the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Of the yeah. Art. Um, yeah. It's, 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 it's not a lot of authenticity when it when it when it when it comes to young, you know. Yeah. Cause that's why people shun away a lot from young blues players. They be like, oh, he just a he just a kid who learned Sweet yeah. Home Chicago, <laughs> and, or or he just or or or, or, or he just another Stevie Ray Vaughan wannabe or something like that. So you know, it's and I can I can I can see why because you can see that a lot nowadays. But there was actually some of us who you know like like our woman didn't leave us nothing, but we actually lived this. This music and yeah. and you know you know and we're still growing in it and some of us you know are very honest when it comes to playing blues you know we're not another kid who just saw Steve Ray Vaughan on a video and then want to straight all the time you know you know that's you know that's just how it is you know you got to choose your moments oh yeah, yeah most know. definitely I always find my favorite musicians are the ones who you're watching them and they'll show flashes of just how they've mastered their instrument but they don't do it the whole time and you're just thinking okay that guy shreds that guy's amazing but he's choosing when to do it right right yeah, right, every, right every inch i love i love seeing that kind of restraint and yeah yeah i had to learn it. that a lot man especially when i first started playing guitar because if you go watch some videos man from 16 dude <laughs> oh yeah I, I was i was i was telling my manager rick about that not too long ago. i said dude i 
I sucked. Really? Because every every line was <laughs> <laughs> you're, you know, you're so, all flash. Yeah, man. So I had to I had to so well I put this like that. With the help of lecturing from my OGs or uh or uh, 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 older musician friends, if you will, with the help of the lecturing and YouTube comments. You know stuff like that. <laughs> so God. yeah, so <laughs> I had to really get to you. Yeah, <laughs> so sometimes, man. So I had to, I had to show a strength. So is is you know I'm still learning it. But, so you're but, watching videos of you when you're 16 or younger and you're cringing now. Yes, yeah. I, what? I, just, I can't. I can't That's probably when I found you. Honestly, I can't put on a video of mine now because I'd be like, man, ugh, ugh. I like turn it off, turn it off, really, turn it off. Like, and then and then uh, five years from now, you're gonna watch you play and. When yeah, 20, it's, gonna, it's, gonna it's gonna be the, the same, same way. Thing? Yeah, it's gonna be the same way. Never be satisfied, huh? Yeah, I, I oh, guess you always be chasing. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like like tone chasing. I can never get the exactly the perfect exactly. tone. It changes every day. Exactly. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't think it's I think like some people has really have really mastered finding that tone, but I don't, but I, I I think for me it is it's not gonna come this early yet. Yeah. You know, so. I th- I think when you're a kid and and you're doing all those flat like not everybody can do that. Mm-hmm. In their lifetime, so you doing it as a kid is really impressive, and that might have helped you get to where you are now. And and the change from what what I'm uh, really concerned about uh, is when the the difference from between when you're 12 and you're 20 is a lifetime compared oh, to yeah. when you're going to be 20 and 30, 30 and 40. So the amount that you've grown and learned just just there, mm-hmm. it's just I'm I'm curious to see where where you take all this. Because uh, yeah, you're talking about too, authenticity, yeah. you're talking like, are you gonna are you gonna start putting uh, mixing like electronic music with your blues? Are you just gonna start? Are you is are you afraid it's gonna start dating it? Man, man, who knows? Cause like I like all different types of music, you know. So you know, of course we wanna we, we wanna keep this you know progressing, you know of uh, you know of course to get the younger people into it, but of course we wanna keep that tradition alive. Yeah, but still, you know. That I don't see no harm in mixing it with other stuff to see what might come out. You never know. Oh, you know? I I, you know? I I totally agree. Yeah. Um. But then there's sometimes when I'm listening to like a Stevie Ray Vaughan song, I'm like, this is '80s. Yeah. <laughs> it's like straight out of the '80s. <laughs> like the, some of the yeah, yeah cold shot and all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but look, I, that's that's why like you have convinced me that time travel exists. You really? Know, you know, everyone always says. <laughs> Oh, time travel wouldn't exist because we we would know it by now. Someone from the future or the past would have came over and said, "Hey guys, it exists. We're all good." <laughs> and I don't know, man. I, I, like the way you play, the way you conduct yourself, your lyrics, the way you sing. Thank you, man. It uh, it's convinced me that uh, you're a time traveler. Appreciate, and, appreciate and that. I caught right you there. right here on camera on podcast form. So just uh, just letting you know, I'm on to you. Okay. So so you're watching YouTube videos when you're a kid. You're you're playing. You're practicing now. You start gigging as a kid too. How did you transfer all that? Because I mean, a lot of kids will play YouTube videos. It's like the the guy playing basketball in his driveway, and he can he can make any shot from his driveway, and then he goes down to the court and plays with other people, and it's a little bit of a different experience. Right? How did how did you uh, work with that? Uh, I had some gigging. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I had some gigging. Um, Exposure, exposure is not the word I'm looking for. I'm just gonna use it anyway. I had some gigs in the spot before I played my first like paying gig, but uh, it was it was actually different because I was actually in a real juke joint and I was watching people get sloppy drunk and falling all over oh. your, your equipment <laughs> and everything. So it was definitely a challenge, but I, 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 I yeah, I definitely got used to it, man. I was playing some crazy places when I was a kid. I did this, I did this biker rally when I was like. 13. Biker rally. Yeah, man. Uh, by the end of the night, I'm on stage playing bass, and there's two women in the audience and topless, and this oh, was crazy, dude. It was the, the crazy dude. So, so you're seeing a lot of crazy stuff as a kid. Already. Yeah, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's the blues, you know. So, you <laughs> it's know, the blues. You, you know. can say that for anything, by the way, and, and I, I just agree. It's the blues. Oh, pretty, it's the blues. Pretty much, blues. man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're playing. When I watch you play, when you when you take solos when you when you uh, when you're really in the moment, your eyes close, you're, you're looking up to the sky. I think you, maybe your your eyes roll to the back of your head and you're kind of just in a different. That place. happened like one time. Oh, it did. Yeah, but it scared me. What happened? <laughs> it just 
when we played my first show uh, in LA at, at, at the Mint, it was it was a special night. I think it was a special night because uh, some of the friendly guys were there and everything. And it was just I just we played Hey Joe, and you could sit on the video that I was like feeling it, and it happened, and I was like, oh damn, you know, like, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I had to I had to calm down a little bit. I was like, thank God this is the last song, or I would have went crazy, you know. So, yeah, yeah. And and where did you go? Do you know? I don't can know you, where can I go explain to. It? I, I I don't think I can, man. Honestly, I was telling my mom about this one time. I, said, I don't think I I don't think I know where I go when I play. Cause all I know is I I just be happy to be on stage so I can play all the problems away and all that type of stuff. So I really don't know where I'm going. I just know that I'm I'm there, you know. Okay, so you're you're in the moment and you don't even know, and then you kind of come to you afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here with Kingfish, he's holding the Fender Vintera. Yes, sir. Guitar, yes, sir. Right in front of him. What, what color is that? Like a surf green? Or uh, like? yeah, seafoam, seafoam green. green. Seafoam, seafoam green. I yeah. love that color. Yeah, my love it too. It's really pretty, man. It I like pops. It. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and uh, so that old guitar, school color too. Yeah, and uh, you did a video uh, for Fender playing that guitar, right? And uh, each each guitar is themed after a different decade. You got the fifties. Fifties. That's the oldest of all their of all their decades that they're promoting. I know, I know. Um, old sold, old decade. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> And the uh, the video, you're kind of like in a smoky club. Yeah, yeah. When I I was at the shoot of that, and uh, I heard you were kind of sick, so everyone's a little worried. Oh man, yeah, Kingfish dude. is sick. And then you go up and you sing, and it's it was the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah, man. I it was a little cold I had, like I was coughing and everything on the plane ride and everything. But it seemed like all that went away when it was time for me to do the shoot. So, I'm okay. Yeah, it was cool. You know. Yeah, sometimes when 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 uh. You get called upon. Exactly. And the moment happens. Exactly. It's like all that. I'm like, man, was I really sick? You know, like that, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, you tell your mom, I don't know where I went. Right, right. Yeah, it, I don't know what happened, Exactly, mom. exactly, you know. And uh, what, what's your favorite thing? Like, when you when you go to a club and you see a blues player, like a blues guitarist, what would that blues guitarist have to do for you to go, that guy knows what he's doing? Oh, man. Uh, like I get it That guy gets it's, it it's, it's funny you say this Cause this just happened Like last weekend When I was in Chicago I went to a, I went to a famous Blues club there And there was some guys On stage who were Who were like old school But There was There was one cat on stage His name was Reno Loudon His tone Was like amazing And his solo was Great and I was just Smiling <laughs> the whole time Yeah So you know Just uh For me For me like anything Like the tone has to be great like you know i'm 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 really into like beefy heavy bluesy you know uh, you, uh, you know distorted tones so for me to like something like that man tone has to be great so that's the first thing i'd be looking for and tone tone is a lot of playing it's not just amp tweaking yeah 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 yeah, yeah. plus because he, he didn't have no pedals or anything he just plugged straight into an amp yeah so it was cool yeah because i hear i hear a lot of uh british blues in you too yeah yeah with, man, your, with that, your tone yeah yeah um uh, british blues some people call it blues rock you know back blues when, rock yeah. yeah you know when clapton them you know came over with cream and all that type of stuff so yeah man i got i got into that too round about Age 14 to 15, you know, stuff like that, Hendrix and all of that psychedelic blues rock stuff, stuff that the purists hates, you know, stuff like that, <laughs> yeah. you know. I, I don't know. I might, that, you, that might be how you're transforming the future of, of, of the music. Uh, well, might be. Well, I mean, we shall see. You know? well, I, I hope so. So you play Hey Joe a lot. That's a good cover yeah, that you do yeah. with Hendrix. Is that your favorite Hendrix song? Yeah, man. I, I love it. Um the first time I ever learned about Hendrix, my mom bought me a Hendrix Smash Hits CD. And I was, well, the first song in there was Purple Haze, but the song that came out of that was Hey Joe. And I I loved it. You know, I, I like songs that, you know, kind of tell a story. Kinda. Yeah. And Hey Joe kind of tells a story, you know, about a cat, you know, who just got out of jail. He came to trying to find this lady and she's with another man. He's about to kill her. So, yeah, I... I enjoyed that, and I've been hooked on that song ever since, man. And plus, I love other versions of it as well. I uh, I agree, and a Little Wing too. I, yeah, a Little yeah. Wing. When I heard Stevie Ray Vaughan's version of Little Wing, though, I kind of liked that a little bit better than the really, game. really, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I like how he added the uh, what he did, uh, Third Stone of the Sun at the end. Was that he added all that in? Oh, I don't know. Was it was it was Third Stone or was it uh, the Santana joint? But it, he he did this he did this really cool thing at the end that was really straight yeah, yeah. I liked it yeah you're so lying you're like oh man what does this guy talk about no 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 you good you good man good man uh, different strokes for different, different strokes yeah. oh yeah. man 
I'm not gonna sleep tonight now. Dude, dude. Okay. You good? Um, all right. Let's let's have you play something though, because everyone's listening. They want to know what you're about, and I want to get into your album, which is out now, Kingfish. Um, so let let's let's have you play a song now. You do have your single outside this town, which mm-hmm. is great. But I'll let you play whatever you want, and and I'll give you this stipul- stipulation. How about this? You walked into a club. Nobody knows who you are. And uh, you step on a stage. Everyone's kind of half paying attention. Yeah. Like, uh, well, who's this guy? Whatever. Let's just let's continue eating our uh, chicken tenders <laughs> and, and shrimp cocktail. What do you play to make everyone? Well, if I'm turn? in a if if I'm in a juke joint, obviously I'll go I'll go this route. No coffee for my breakfast. No butter on my roll. I ain't got a drop of milk for the cornflakes in my bone. Well, I'm all fresh out. Said I'm all fresh out. Had no loving since the day. Since the day you went away, said I'm all fresh out. No jelly in the jar, no flour in the sack. I ain't got nothing cooking, babe. Please, won't you come back? Well, I'm all fresh out. Said I'm all fresh out. Had no loving since the day. Since the day you went away, said I'm all fresh out. Drained up my last bottle of Johnny Walker Red. Nobody in this house uh, but me and an empty bed. While I'm out on fresh out, said I'm on fresh out. Had no loving since the day. Since the day you went away, but I'm all fresh out. Yes. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, man. man, that's fresh out. Track two. Yep. <laughs> off of Kingfish's album. That one actually has Buddy Guy in it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've been hanging with him a lot, huh? Yes, sir. The, 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 the OG. <laughs> how, did, how did you meet him? Man, um,. I was really big on him when I was like younger, when I really started playing guitar. Of course you were. And uh, I got a chance to open a show for him back in 2013. I met him then. Fast forward a few years later, 2015, I, I sat in with him. And sat in with him again shortly after that. <laughs> and then so one day we get this call from uh, my godfather, uh, Tony T.C. Coleman. He played, he played drums for BB for a long time. He was like, hey, man, uh, buddy wants to help you out with a record. Because uh, everybody at the time was asking us why we didn't do one. And there yeah. was a whole lot of stuff that didn't that, that reason why we didn't do it. But uh, You're just a kid. Yeah, you, well, you know, that and, you know, takes money. And I was in school and all that type of stuff. You know, I didn't really have none of that. And, um, you know, buddy, uh, Mr. Guy, he came and, you know, uh, yeah, he came out and, and helped out and, that's how we got it going, man. His producer, Tom Hambridge, which is also his drummer now, uh, we we got together, hooked up on a few songs at his house. We wrote like six on a day, and we ended up recording a record that November, and it all played. 
So he he reached out to you and wanted to help you. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. His um one of his daughters, uh the one um um on their raps uh she hit me up on Facebook too like one time and we talked about it. It was cool. And that must just be the most amazing compliment ever, right? One of your heroes. Yeah, man, it was hit you it, up. It, 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 it had me numb for a minute, you know. But what that was cool. But what really got me was when I got a chance to actually go on tour with him. And, you know, I I, I did like. Eight dates, eight or ten dates, ten dates, ten dates with him. Um, a few in the south, and we did like eight over here in Cali with him. So that was pretty much great because I got a chance to actually sit down and talk with him about the business and everything. So he's kind of like your mentor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coming in, get yeah, coming in, most definitely. I mean, he's seen it all. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been around. He's, he's yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He's added to my to my ever growing list of mentors. You know, yeah. so most definitely. Yeah, Kebmo's on this album. Too. Yes, sir. That's my guy as well. Yeah, I I met him right around 2015 when uh, BB had passed. They had a uh, they had a big thing for him. They was bringing his body through Bill Street in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, and and right off Bill Street, that's Pavilion where they had uh, they have this pavilion where they have concerts. So they put together a last minute concert of all these different artists to come and BB's band was there and everybody did tributes. And I they saw me come and they just let me backstage because they knew who I was. Yeah. And he was the first person I bumped into. And I was like, hey man, how you doing? And we shook hands and took a picture together and it was magical, man. And I asked him, could I write a song with him? And it was like, cool, but we never got around to it. So the next week he just showed up to the studio and we session play like on four different tracks and he also guessed on the song as well singing yeah so so when you meet kebmo and you go hey man i want to write a song does he know who you are oh or yeah 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 okay yeah, he was already cool before that. okay yeah, <laughs> like, we, take yeah. my word for it man i play oh yeah i'm pretty good <laughs> no nah, no nah, we were always cool because um how he reached out to me was through email on my website he said he was a fan somebody turned him on it's incredible and then yeah not only that we met a few times after that and then uh we, we did this cruise together, and that's when I pitched the song I did him. We were supposed to write together, but never got to it. But the next week, that's when he showed up to the studio. And uh, so when you write with these guys, how much input are they giving you? Like a, like Buddy Guy sings mm. the uh, the lyric, um, I drank out my last bottle of a Johnny Walker Red. Right, right. He, uh, he, can, he can relate to that one more yeah, than I can. That's you know? thinking, <laughs> yeah. I was like... That's a mature lyric, I think. Right, right. Yeah. So so he so he they're they're writing are they writing their verses or are you well you guys both Well Fresh writing? Out was already written by Tom Hambridge, which is buddy producer, which is the one who also produced my record. Song so, uh, so yeah. Good. Uh yeah, the thing about it, it all came into play, man, because we felt like uh felt like Mr. Guy would be right for that song. And yeah, man, I, I think that was the right verse too, most definitely. Because he could relate to him yeah. better than I could, of course, you know. And then uh, the first, the single outside this town. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're you're still living in Mississippi. Yeah. And you're are you trying to get out of there? Or you you like it there? What what's going on? I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, no place like home. But still, yeah. you know, uh, everybody want to go. You know, it's you know it's it's kind of you know people want to taste of that fast paced lifestyle a little bit because Mississippi can still be. You know, stuck in their ways yeah, and slow sure. paced. You know, like so. You know, just you know, everybody wants to leave at least once in their lifetime. You know, you know. So yeah, that's that's no put it like that. That's just how I felt at the time when I wrote the song. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know, uh, I wrote it in my you know like living room like some years ago. So you know, that's just how I felt at the time. You know, so of course I it's looking out the window. Yeah, leaving. yeah. There's man. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, man. So you know, I do. Plan on leaving, but I'm not going to forget or nothing like that. Yeah. Of course, I want to come back and help out my community and my town, and you know this, that, and the third. You know, most definitely. Well, I think that's the beauty of the internet, though, too. Right now, that you you can literally just play from your living room; it'll go out to the world. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. That's that's you know that you know that's why I try to tell some you know artists you know don't be too hung up on hometown support. You know, which hometown support is good, but yeah. you know there are people who are in their cities where no one knows who they are, but they have like. How are these followers on social media? So you know you can get support with that hometown. You know? Yeah, and yeah. you you're you're constantly touring anyway. You're never home. Yeah, no, every night I, I just start to be back home. You know, but like we've been like going three weeks at a time on the road. And yeah, everything, so yeah, I see your posts. They're all tour dates, and uh, yeah, you're just going. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, they working me hard, man. But not that I'm complaining because I like it. You know, because yeah. that's something I always want to do. But still, you know. Does it get tiring? Must, right? Yeah, because, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a morning person. 
Oh, is that true? Yeah, I, I, I hate getting up in the morning, man. So, you know, you know, we had them lobby calls and my man Jarek, we like, man, 7 a.m., you know, so we can, yeah, seven. yeah, we, yeah, 7 a.m., so we can, we can take this five hour ride and, you know, so, you know. All right, I want. I do want to have you play another song. I think everyone watching this and okay. just he's just mad at me. Like, why are you talking to him so much, man? <laughs> let, let, let the man play. Um, so before we get into that, just uh, real quick, where do you see the blues going then? Like, where, what do you see is happening? Is it is it going to stay just authentic, or is it going to is it going to move to just well, like totally said, different? You know that, like I said, that that traditional, that authenticity will always be there. You know, that's yeah. the root. You know, that what you know that's what birthed everything else. But of course, man, you know. Like I said earlier, there I don't see no harm, and you know if, if you want to create and mix, you know, go ahead, you man, do what you do. I like that, you know. But still, you know, that root will always be there. So of course, man, I, I want to do both. Yeah, they, people say you can't do both, but I, I know I want to do both. So you know, it's yeah, proven wrong. Yeah, you've been proving people wrong your whole life. Yeah, man. So yeah, yeah just do what you do, man. Yeah. Now, before you play, when you go out on shows, do you do you get in like a mindset? Do you do you get like what, what? How do you how do you get mentally there? Before man, I get very out? nervous before a show. Oh, you did? Yeah, what? Man, yeah, you were playing since you were thirteen. Man, especially like the Fender joint last night. Who's <laughs> the? Uh, uh, not last the, night, but the, but the yeah, the other night. The one that everyone's just been complimenting you on. Dude, I was so nervous that whole show, dude. It was crazy. That thing, like playing in front of like two hundred people, was cool. Mm-hmm. But playing in front of like two hundred musicians is something. That's else. different, right? Yeah, because you know, yeah. you like, you know, man, somebody in the crowd is judging me. Or somebody, <laughs> you know, somebody's somebody's somebody didn't like that lick. Somebody called out a wrong note. I just hid, you know. Uh, so you know, I, I was I was nervous for real life. Like I get nervous like before every show. But what I try to do is I try to listen to music that I like and try to joke around with my band so it can ease the. Mm-hmm. Each attention, you know. Yeah, so, and then and then you just go out and you do your thing. Yeah, man. Once the once the first song is over, and I'm probably I would say around the first solo of the second song, I'm comfortable. I'm in my oh, I'm yeah. in my zone now. Feet, Everything's good. Yeah. Your feet are wet. Yeah, you're ready yeah, to go. Yeah, I'm good now, man. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's get let's get to that uh, first half of the second song right cool. now. How about that? <laughs> so what? Yeah, whatever you want, man. I do outside this time. I'm leaving this town tomorrow. Plenty places to see and many places to go. I'm so tired of doing the same old thing. Shooting for the highest star, want people to remember my name. If you don't understand, let me break it down. I know that there's life outside of this town. Outside of this town. I got friends and family that I see every day. Don't plan on moving forward. Stuck in the same old way But that's a night the road Of that I, I wanna go down I gotta do what's the best for me Ain't no hanging around I can stay here forever But I just can't stick around I know that there's life Outside of this town Outside of this town Getting back, all you're gonna see is tail lights, 
crossing those railroad tracks. If I don't leave, I die here. They'll put me six feet down. I know that there's life outside of this town. Outside of this town. Outside of this town. Outside of this town. Thank you. Yes. So you just played Outside of the Town, the first track off your new album, Kingfish. Mm. You played the first two tracks. There are 10 other tracks on <laughs> this album, people. 10 more of that. Yes, so sir. please uh, please check that out and uh, follow him on Instagram. Just just follow this guy. I mean, he's he's changing the blues and I uh, couldn't be happier. Oh, that you're man. Doing, man. And, um, and Fender, thank you for having us. Yes, and sir. Check out the Ventera series. That's the guitar you're just playing. It yes, sounds sir. so good. Yeah, man. Feels I love good, it, huh? Man. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah what man. are you? I'm, I'm blown away, and uh, I don't mean to come on too strong, but your your bend control is incredible. All right. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right. Um, well, there we have it. Kingfish. Everybody, find him on Instagram. Ooh. What what's your what's your handle? Uh, underscore they call me Kingfish. Underscore the, yeah, you I, can search Kingfish though yeah, to find it. Yeah, but I just want to make this uh, a disclaimer. It'll be changing soon. Oh so, yeah, just want to let you know. So, oh yeah. Okay. yeah. So for now, but underscore they call me Kingfish. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and Chris Stone Ingram. Chris, yeah, Stone, Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram. Ingram. Find him. Get his album. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Most definitely. Yeah. See you. Uh, see you next time. Right. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs>